forget about change. Texas Congressman Ron Paul wants to give government a complete overhaul. And he says that the Obama administration is wrong about everything from fixing the economy to war in the Middle East. And here to tell us if he wants to make things right as president in 2012 is the author of Liberty Defined, Congressman Ron Paul. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, you, you did vote. You did run for president in 1998 and 2008, yes? 88. 88. I have 98 here. 88 and 08. 88 and 08. Okay. So um, there are rumors you're going to run again this time. Are you going to run? There, I've heard about those rumors. <laughs> did, did you start them? Uh, no, I think my son did. Yeah, <laughs> Randall no. was his son who was yeah. also. Uh, no. Uh, of, of, <laughs> he does. I think he's a great guy. <laughs> Of course, there's been a lot of people ask, and yeah. there, there's a temptation to do it, but uh, I'll announce within a month. Okay. So say, look that, forward. say that's the case, and we will look forward to that. Governor Mitt Romney has announced um, Governor Mike Huckabee and Donald Trump are possible contenders, too. What will it take for you to beat them in the primary if you choose to run as To a get more votes. Right? I need more votes. How do you plan you know, so, I, I, really, right now, it may I really, be a great opportunity with I the really Republican think, Party. I really think if the message gets out, we can do it. Take, for instance, the war issue. I take a position which is not the conventional uh, issue for the Republicans. Right. But 70 percent of the American people are sick and tired of the war, and sure. they want us to come home from yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah. 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 You know who was here? Uh, Jesse Ventura was here, and he said, if you run, he wants to be your running mate. Are you interested in having him do that? Well, I haven't gotten that far yet, uh, but uh, I'd have to think about that. Uh, so, uh, no, uh, I don't think it's legal to offer a position, you know, before you're nominated, you know, so you've got to be that careful. True. You have to be a little careful. <laughs> you know, you mentioned running for president, but Rand Paul, your son, you mentioned Rand before, he wants to run also. You'll be running against your son. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I don't think it's likely to happen. No. <laughs> There's a little bit of discipline in the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a good beating. I have two questions for you. The first is, how would you get us out of the war? Because it seems to be a, 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 an answer that el has eluded everyone. How do we get out? That's what I mean. I, I would like to know because I'd like to, I would like to get out, but I'd, I'd like to I like to get out of all of right. all of the wars, you know, right. because our kids are. But how do, do you yeah, have? I, a, do yeah, you I, have don't, a, I don't think it's complicated. Okay. How did we go in? We just marched in without permission, without a declaration of war. So a good president would just march home. They would just well, leave. Well, you know, to be fair to you, you said this about George Bush's war on Iraq also. He, you're oh, very yeah. consistent. It, it, both yes. parties are war parties. Let's face it. That's what we have to why? admit. Why? Because it increases the economy? Well, it's good for I don't armaments. know why. What is it? I don't know. It might even be a conspiracy. But it seems like the military-industrial complex controls both mm -hmm. parties. Because mm -hmm. a lot of weapons are sold. Mm -hmm. And you always have to have right. an enemy. Think how many weapons have been sold already just mm. bombing Libya. Mm. How many dollars do we have to spend getting more drones to drop bombs on Pakistan? Mm -hmm. But it's both parties. Well, that's, that's why the people have to wake up. If they're tired of war, and they will eventually get tired of war, they're getting that well, way. Well, we'll be but it'll be financial. Yeah. 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 No, most, yeah. most empires end when they go into a financial that's crisis. It, and we're in the middle. Of, we're starting it. I mean, we've had the bursting of the financial bubble. Now we're about to go into well, a dollar we crisis. We went through a lot of dollars before this this guy took we office were, we ran through a lot of money on right. all these wars but that I want to ask you about something else cuz you're not a big fan of federal funding for planned parenthood and I'm curious so you you don't want to get rid of planned parenthood you just want to get rid of the idea that federal money is going to them well, I haven't even addressed that subject. Not, not, too, not too long ago, we had two votes on the floor. One was NPR versus getting out of, out of Afghanistan. And all the conservatives voted, of course, to spend billions and billions on Afghanistan. But they wanted to teach a lesson that we have to vote against NPR. And they would use the same tool, uh, you know, Planned Parenthood. No, I don't support Planned Parenthood because I don't support most programs. That, because most programs are, as far as I'm concerned, uh, technically unconstitutional. Unless I see the, the authority there. Just I address it like I address the war issue. Don't go to war unless it, it, it's a declared war, and the president can't do it what's without it, getting permission. What's unconstitutional about Planned Parenthood in your mind, just to be clear for our viewers? What's unconstitutional? Well, I looked at Article 1, Section 8, and I look for my authority, and if it's not there, I, I don't do it. And that's 
that's why I have to vote no a lot. You know, well, because you know, there's not much there. You also don't uh, believe that medical care is a right. Now, as a hmm. as a gynecologist, you're a doctor. How do you how do you justify that sort of feeling like not every American deserves the right to good medical well, care? You don't have a right to things and services. You have a right to your life. You have a right to your liberty. Yeah. And uh, if you want good medical care or if you want a healthy economy, you have to have a free market economy with sound money and uh, good contract laws, and then there'll be great prosperity. But we have a system of corporatism now where business and governments are partners and they rip us off, whether it's the military industrial complex. In medicine today, both parties promote a, uh, a form of medicine delivered by corporations, big drug companies, so insurance companies, people, so and that's why we do? have lousy care. So, so yeah, what do poor saying. people do who have nothing? I mean, because What's it's, you know, and, well, are it we... Is, yeah. uh, it is. And, okay. and I'm truly compassionate about that. Mm -hmm. and, but I truly believe that they're more likely to get taken care of than have the bankruptcy of Medicaid and Medicare, which we're going to have. And we're not going to have care for anybody. Is that because but I practice poor people? The poor, everybody's going to be poor. Nobody's going to get Medicare no, no, the but dollar. Right, but right now, I'm talking okay. about right, right now. Right now. Yeah. Well, we're leading to this problem. Right. But I practiced medicine at, at a time when we had no Medicare and med, no Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And I worked in a Catholic hospital. Mm -hmm. I worked That's for three, three dollars. I know, but yeah. the principle is important. I worked for three dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and I was satisfied. And nobody was turned away, but the church took care of them. But, right. But so well. but when, you don't, when you don't have those services now, because it's exactly. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, applaud you're applauding old America, the idea that no sense. one was turned away. If we could get back to that, would it make it a little bit easier, you yeah, think? It's the opposite. Now, when you go to the yeah, emergency no, room, we, well, well, it's the system. Paying. We're paying for the it's, emergency it's room, It's right? the system. Yeah. You go to the yeah. emergency room, and if you don't have insurance, you're immediately signed up, and yes. you're always charged the most. Mm -hmm. When I practice early, you were always charged the least, okay. and you help people. Before but now, you charge the most. <laughs> Just one more thing before we go. I know we have to wrap. What do you think about this birther obsession with Donald Trump and the birthers? I don't know. I understand he has uh, sent out some uh, detectives to find out. Yeah. yeah, I haven't invested in any of that, so I, I guess I'll have He's to wait and see what he does. He's going to have to zoom Don Hull. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, I guess he was desperate for, uh, desperate for an audience. Maybe. He got his audience. He got it. Congressman, we want to thank you for being here. Your book is a very interesting read. Thanks to Ron Paul. Members of our audience are going home with his new book, Liberty.